Originally, this build started out as a joke, but it ended up working really, really well, so I decided, hey, I'll make a video on it. The nightfall for the week was Strange Terrain, and I decided to make a Rasputin build out of Spite for Nocris. So on the helmet, I've got Burning Cells, which causes solar explosions when destroying Warmind Cells. Next is Sun Bracers, and these things are absolutely insane. Your solar grenades last longer, and your solar melee briefly gives you unlimited solar grenades. These will be even better when Beyond Light comes out, and Exotic Armor can take Warmind Cell mods. On the robes, we have Rage of the Warmind, which gives you additional solar damage on Warmind Cell explosions, along with the Seasonal Artifact mod Inferno Whip, which also gives our melee the ability to stagger unstoppable champions. The boots have global reach, which extends the distance of our Warmind cell explosions. And finally on the armor we have Wrath of Rasputin, which allows our solar splash damage to create Warmind cells. It also has Ashes to Assets and Enhanced Ashes to Assets, which gives us super energy on grenade kills. For weapons, there is the Seven Seraph Officer Revolver with Unstoppable Mod and Timed Payload. The revolver has a chance to create Warmind Cells on kills, and Timed Payload means that while we're floating in the air, we only have to get close to Warmind Cells to detonate them. Next, we have the Ikelos SMG, and the important perk to have on this weapon is the Seraph Rounds. I'll go into some of the intricacies of Seraph Rounds later in the video, but another good perk to have in conjunction with them is Disruption Break. This will make enemies whose shields were broken by this weapon more vulnerable to kinetic damage. Also, it can create Warmind Cells, and has the Anti-Barrier Seasonal mod. And finally for the weapons, there is the Sleeper Simulant's Linear Fusion Rifle. Its exotic perk Sleeping Beauty overpenetrates targets and ricochets off hard surfaces, splitting the projectile into more projectiles that overpenetrate. Unfortunately, even though it is a gift from Rasputin, it won't create Warmind Cells. Now, even though I don't have the catalyst for this gun, it's still an absolute beast of a weapon. Now here's how the basic combat loop works with this setup. 1. Get a melee kill. 2. Throw as many solar grenades as possible. 3. Clean up whatever is left with guns. Now here I opened with the sleeper simulant to quickly deal with the shrieker and strip the shields off the wizard so that my allies coming behind me could have an easier time dealing with it. Then it's time to melee an acolyte and get our grenades and proceed to play the floor's lava with the hive. They're not very good at it. As you can see, we've managed to spawn two Warmind Cells with these grenades, and upon destroying the first one, we get credit for killing a Wizard and an Acolyte. Destroying the second cell doesn't credit any kills, but as I'm throwing this orb, I'm getting damage ticks, so someone in this room is taking damage from it. Now here's what makes the Aikolos SMG fun. What's this? A Hive Barrier? Seraph Rounds don't care, they punch right through that barrier and his head. What makes the Aikolos SMG a must-have for running activities that have champions is that Disruption Break uh, counts barrier champions as barriers. So if you have the anti-barrier mod on your Aikolos SMG and you take down a champion barrier, that champion will now take 50% more damage from kinetic weapons. And that isn't just your kinetic weapons, but your allies' kinetic weapons as well. So to recap everything awesome about the Aikolos SMG, the Seraph Rounds overpenetrate targets and barriers, Having Disruption Break perk on it will apply a debuff to enemies you strip the shields off of, and as if that didn't get any better, it creates Warmind Cells. Remember the Wrath of Rasputin perk on the Warlock Bond that allowed Solar Splash damage to create Warmind Cells? Because we're running Top Tree Dawnblade, our melee does Solar Splash damage, our grenade does Solar Splash damage, and our super does Solar Splash damage. And when they're paired with the Sun Bracers Exotic Gauntlets, we're pretty much guaranteed to spawn Warmind Cells every time we play the Floor's Lava with our enemies. Oh, and the Solar Splash damage we get from exploding Warmind Cells? Yeah, those count too, so our Warmind Cells even have potential to create Warmind Cells. Now, normally I get really annoyed when allies shoot my Warmind Cells if they're not running Warmind Cell mods on their armor. Warmind cells only take the perks of the person who destroys them, so if someone else destroys the cells you create, they only explode with a normal explosion and not with your super big solar explosion. But, with this setup I was creating so many Warmind cells that I was asking my allies to shoot the cells so that they could have that little extra bump in DPS from them. Oh, something I almost forgot, with Top Tree Dawnblade, getting kills while you're in the air will recharge your melee ability. And this counts not just for weapon kills, but ability kills as well. 
so potentially you can float up, throw a melee at an enemy, cover the ground in grenades, get your melee back from the grenade kills, throw your melee at the enemy, cover the more of the ground in grenades, all before touching the ground again. And with two ashes to assets perks on the warlock bond, you have the potential to recharge your super insanely quick. You can become the Oprah of grenades. You know, the you get a grenade, you get a grenade, everybody gets a grenade. This build has such a high degree of versatility that I decided to take it into Gambit and see how it works. And lo and behold, it kicks a lot of taken butt. With the layout of Gambit maps being larger and more open than most strike areas, it can sometimes be difficult to get the cellular pain train going choo-choo, but once the train leaves the station and builds up speed, you and your allies will be swimming in a jacuzzi of moats aboard the Rasputin Express. Now this is the first time I'd used Sleeper Simulant and Gambit since it got nerfed a while back, but it's still an absolute menace, especially if you have linear fusion rifle ammo finder equipped. A body shot will instantly kill an invading guardian, a body shot will instantly kill small and medium blockers, and an accidental ricochet body shot will kill you too. Yeah, Sleeper Simulant's RNG can sometimes be weird, do not use this with a bubble titan, like, at all, you will wipe your team. <laughs> Uh, anywho, I didn't do any th invading while I was recording for this, but every single time we were invaded, boom, I was right there voraciously hunting down the invaders and sending them back to their side. Now, would this work for Crucible? Eh, sort of? As far as I can tell, Warmind cells don't spawn in Crucible, or if they do, it's incredibly rare and I've never witnessed it. The Disruption Break perk on the Ikelos SMG does count for Guardian Shields, which is super handy, especially in higher level competitive play. So if you manage to break a Guardian Shield with it, they'll briefly take 50% more kinetic damage from your team. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there. <laughs> this dude made a pentagram with anarchy. There are so many philosophical layers here.